Hello, so a few aspects about this video. It is posted unlisted on YouTube.com so that it is not public and I can control on what place it's at, aside from, of course, those who would come to this video from those places and do whatever they would want with this, namely that of flagging it or whatever, so that it is not censored in that it is put on here for the purpose of it being viewable via a URL and that it isn't public by default. It is technically public in the sense of posting it to Facebook or posting it to wherever I post it to, but it isn't public on YouTube.com by default, and that's the issue that I'm talking about right here. Because I've got my channel connected with BitChute, and whatever I put on here that is on public to begin with is public via BitChute, and I can't really control that the same way that I can't control that with Steam, and I find that to be rather alarming. So by putting it here on Unlisted, I'll be able to control who sees it and to, in a very real and literal sense, be able to control this content in that I'd be able to delete it and actually be able to delete it. So this video is in combination with, oh, I can't actually do that, can I? With, there it is, his video about the May 15 hard fork and about the issue, I think, the perhaps ongoing issue of... A lot of, it's nice to realize that I can pause, because I can tend to ramble and I don't want to waste time with this stuff. Not just my time, your time, because you're watching this. The ongoing issue of, in a large sense, the ability to have and build community. This is a problem that I've been looking at for a while in a number of different disconnected communities that have very similar attributes in that of they are very independent-minded, they are very much for peace, they are very much for decentralization and so forth, and what seems to come with that, at least at the moment, is the lack of ability to come together and to support things as a unified unit, as a collective whole. The two communities that I'm thinking of principally are that of the anarchist community and then the Bitcoin slash Bitcoin cash community. And while these groups, these two groups, the anarchist community and the Bitcoin cash community, kind of what I'm referring to here, aren't necessarily the same at all whatsoever, the philosophies of independence, of self-determination and so forth, these are very much more or less the core values of these two groups of, of people. For immediately right now, in relation to each of these groups, there are two people who, for me at least right now, represent very optimistic, positive directions that these groups could go in. And for the Bitcoin Cash community, that is Ryan X. Charles. And for the anarchist community right now, that is Patrick. I forgot his last name at the moment. And I think his name is Patrick, I should check. No, it's Parker Lutz. So this issue has been, this issue being that of being able to come together as a group to make things happen has been more of an issue and more of an ongoing issue for anarchists. The typical stereotype that, that goes to anarchists and that has really been hard to overcome for sort of the same reason as to what the philosophy is more or less is that of ideal, naive uh, person who just doesn't really do anything and just argues online. And this idea goes in a very made it, to a very made a place in a very rapid way because it kind of is a literal thing that of well, yeah, because you're defending taxation and so forth, and so I can't really get anything going before that of you not defending it, is the idea. But that makes for quite the... It just doesn't start then. You just, where, where do you go with that? No one's going to go with that, except unless they accept and understand the idea. This is actually one huge spot where the veganism community or the, just veganism in general, has been one huge amount of, wow, I can actually do something. And it's really ironic because most of the time when I talk to people about this stuff, and it's in reference to food, we're talking about what to have for meals, the idea is, oh, you, you can't have this, you can't have that, but, but I can have this. And I'm always with this undercurrent of, no, I can have that, I choose not to. I don't really say that, but it's just like this ongoing irritation of, no, I can technically have that. I still want to be part of rape and murder and so forth of the animals, and that's kind of the unpleasant part of the conversation here. <laughs> but it's along the lines of like, no, I can have that. I am choosing not to for all those reasons that you don't want to be talking about. But what that go what goes with that is this ongoing, incessant reality of activism through your own whether or not what you consume. 
that if I'm not going to consume milk, I'm not going to consume cheese, I'm not going to consume this or that. And it's similar to that of the action of the action. The lack of the action via not voting. Except it doesn't happen every four years. It happens kind of every single day. Often multiple times during the day. <laughs> it's a multiple kind of action that you're not doing. <laughs> and so th it's very easy to do this action on an almost constant basis. It's almost impossible not to. <laughs> but that is a very active thing you can do right away all the time on a constant basis. And the question that I kind of was, that, we were, that we've been working on is, that people in general in the anarchy community have been working on, anarchist community, is what, 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 what's there to do? What can we actually do? And that's also what people who aren't part of it are also saying, well, what, what do you do? I can do this, I can do that, but that's in politics, man. What, what about the not-governor not thing? What about the not-president thing? What about that? Well, that's part of the original politics, right? So that's just developed from the start. Well, what do we do? What do we do? I would like to do something, right? So, in regard to the anarchist community, Parker had the idea... Because I was going like, well, what, what would we do? Because you can do this stuff very easily vegan. It's kind of just automatic. You just don't eat animal products. You don't consume animal products. It's a 20-day, 30-day challenge, whatever that thing was. I think it's actually a 20-day challenge that I saw. And I realized that after like, I took the challenge, I was like, then the challenge was done, but the challenge was about going vegan. And, and I'm like, oh, I'm already vegan by default, so I guess I didn't need to do the challenge. <laughs> but I do need to work on the recipes because I'm, I'm shit with cooking. So I need to work on that part. So... What Parker came up with was th a three-tier thing. The basis of it being that of no consumption of mainstream media or news. And then what's paired up with that is that of watching curated content that are chosen by anarchists slash voluntarists. Now we've got the easy part of that down is simply that of no media watching. And the huge thing that we were including with that was an incentive for people to even want to do it in the first place. And so there would be challengers, namely voluntarists, and then the challenged. Those would be the status or the normal people, quote-unquote. And they would be doing, doing a bet of $50, $100, $10, $1,000, you know, whatever would be agreed on by the voluntarist and then the statist as to, well, I think you're going to be a voluntarist after you watch this content. And then the statist going, uh, no, I don't think I will be. And the first thing that we kind of worked on, that I worked on, was that of making that bet process fair given based on whether or not the content was convincing, whether or not the vote would go to the the, 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 the bet would go to them or not, their part, and then the voluntarious part. That's kind of what I've worked on first. And now we're at the part where we're working on the actual content part. Parker sent me a bunch of PDFs for online stuff, and I'm like, uh, yeah, that'd be intimidating as hell for any status to look at, and they'd be like, well, why bother? It's just $100. I don't even give a damn enough to try that out. And it's a 30-day challenge part, and there was this idea that we were going with what with that would be after the 30 days, you'd see if that were, whether or not they were, and if there was a, a kind of distrust, well, another 30 days to look at that, and then I was like, wait a second, it's a 30-day challenge, not a 60-day challenge. So I got rid of that and just went, went, went it for, that if there was a dispute about it, if they're like, yes, I'm actually a voluntarist, the state is saying this, then the voluntarist, if they didn't believe him, they could say, hey, community, I think that this guy's wrong about this, and then there'd be the two questions to answer for them, so that we can see if they're like, I don't have status, but I at least understand this stuff about it. Namely, is taxation, uh, what is taxation? How, I'm not sure what the question, I don't quite recall what the question was, but you can look at it if you're interested in this and want to go in the group. Uh, is taxation, what, what is taxation, or how is, oh, it was how is taxation theft? That's the first question. You can answer that one. Or how is a voluntary society preferable to a status one? I think it was one of those two questions to answer. And if you could answer to the satisfaction of the challenger or the community that you'd be that you'd be the group that you'd be talking about it under that then you could say okay yeah you understand it you're still a statist okay you we can at least understand you understand the IE and concept here's your money back so then that would be a failed bet or if there wasn't comprehension of it and they were like no you you don't understand the concept still then you would lose the money because you're like you're betting that but it, you didn't even get the comprehension of it to begin with so you didn't really keep up your part of the deal. That's kind of the idea behind it. And then the other part of it is that if you do become a voluntarist, then you would get the money for that for, from the other... Wait. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure this out a little bit. It's kind of an ongoing process because the idea is that of 
there's a want to have people be interested in looking at this stuff and also have to say, hey, if you can figure this out and you become a voluntarist, you can get some money off of this. And kind of the idea is, I think, is that if the bet ends up that the person becomes a voluntarist, that they, like, get all the money. So then they, because that'd be a win for, for, the, for the anarchists here, is that we want people to become voluntarists. We want people to understand these ideas and not be in what we consider to be a cognitive dissonance about it. But that is an extremely hard thing, especially with the idea that, well, what, 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 what do you do? What do you do? You don't vote every four years? You just talk about the stuff in an ongoing process? People are looking at the politics stuff like, I want to fix that, and I want to fix that, and I want to fix that, and I see politics as a way to do this, and how, uh, what would you like to say? Uh, don't vote? Well, what's that going to do? So there's this then encouragement to say, hey, check this out, you can make some money and uh, check out these ideas, there's a better way to do this, and so forth and so on. With also this one person who's going for not governor. So this relates to the Bitcoin Cash stuff, and that there's a similar effect or aspect and I think the Bitcoin Cash community. Although there's a huge difference in that the there's similar to the veganism stuff that I see is that you can actually use <laughs> Bitcoin Cash. It might be a bit hard to use it, but it will eventually be very much adopted and used, and that's kind of like the entire point. But if it, if it doesn't, if the disinformation about Bitcoin Core is being Bitcoin, or that the Lightning Network is, was made by Bitcoin, or that that's what Bitcoin is, that's an issue there. But... There's a lot more room for improvement with the Bitcoin Cash community. The question sort of is along the line of how would this stuff be dealt with, or is it a problem that is kind of inherent to the Bitcoin Cash community? I don't really know, and that's kind of the ongoing question there. And I see these, I see these as being related questions because I'm pretty sure that anarchists are very much wanting to have things happen and would be very easily easily would easily go into the Bitcoin Cash community because there's a lot of crossover overall. I mean, not everything is there, but there's a lot of the same ideas overall. Plus, it's a new innovative system. The thing that I think of in regards to both of this is kind of the quote from Richard Dawkins about atheists, namely that there's this strong individualism and ability for being just strong-headed and able to go about your way and be kind of just self-sufficient. And that the idea then is that it's as easy to lead atheists as it is to herd cats. You don't hurt cats. They aren't hurtable. And that's kind of the question. Would we be able to, are we able to, in this more independent-minded, sort of decentralized aspect, sort of strong about the idea of freedom, about being independent, can we come together and actually form groups that actually do and have action that impacts the world in a, much po in a very positive direction? Or are we doomed to just a decentralized chaos of not being able to get our shit together? Are we doomed to that, or can we actually get something going? I mean, there's quite the idea that, oh, we're all over here, and I am in trouble, and you're in trouble, and I don't know what to do, and I need money, and so do you, and what do we do about it? And, well, we've got all these people here. We've got all these, all of us, together. Let's see what we can do, is kind of the idea that I'm going with, and that's kind of the question. Can we do that? That's a good question. How can we put our heads together and get this going? Is it possible to? I sure hope it is. So I'm, I'm doing this video here on YouTube as Unlisted as opposed to Facebook because I want a less amount of immediate interaction so that I'm less distracted and I'm not, also not on Facebook. I'm posting this to Facebook because I do want people to see it and look at it, but I'm, I'm looking to have it be off the platforms of YouTube, off the platforms of Facebook, off of these fascist networks. I'm having an issue with trying to use DTube, but the reason I'm making this video is that I was very excited about Ray Charles, Charles's video, and I wanted to do some input about that and say, hey, yeah, I agree, and this is an ongoing issue that I see too, and how would this be dealt with? And I think that, that needs to be talked about sooner than later for the immediate conversations that could happen right now to get the ball going on a lot of these things. But I don't really want to do, be doing these, these videos a lot. I just was very excited and inspired and wanted to just do a quick add addition into what Ray Charles was talking about.